News Channel 3. Her armed takeover robberies in which the victims were forced to the ground or into back rooms as the bad guys made off with cash and even entire ATMs. Two convicted felons are now under arrest by San Francisco police in connection with three armed takeover robberies, including one at Happy Donuts at 24th and Church in Noe Valley. Surveillance video shop. shows the suspects invading the donut shop at about 5.30 in the morning on October 2nd. They robbed a worker of $80, stole about $1,500 from the shop, and stole the store's ATM with $5,000 inside. Where my money at? <laughs> Do I get my money back? Rotha Van is manager at Happy Donuts, which is open 24 hours a day and is a favorite with customers. I'm very happy they get them, you know, but uh, one thing we think about, like, I hope they put them long time in a jail. The suspects, 32-year-old Jaquez <laughs> Tucker and 33-year-old Jaquez, were arrested in a week. I hope so, too, lady. Don't bank on them. The suspects, 32-year-old Jaquez Tucker and 33-year-old Lloyd Gage, were arrested in a week-long spree of three robberies. Officers recovered several guns, including two pistols and a short-barreled rifle. In two of those incidents, the suspects pistol whipped the victims and also took Officer, what? their uh, business ATM machines. They even uh, forced victims onto the ground or corralled them into the got a long-ass name. Police say it wasn't hard to connect Gage to the holdups clothing that Gage was wearing um, was the same clothing he wore and the shoes during the robberies. Roberto Hernandez sits on the board of the Mission Merchants oh, Association. We... He welcomes the arrest but says more <laughs> needs to be done. Small business owners are hard, having a hard time keeping their employees, hiring new people to work. So there's a, a workforce issue Roberto going on. Hernandez. Sure it... I wasn't expecting him to sound like that, though. Shout out to Juan Valdez. Yeah, he, he lost points on that <laughs> one. <laughs> Small business owners are hard, having a hard time keeping their employees, hiring new people to work. So there's a, a workforce issue going on of shortage. Second of all, is that you're not safe. Yeah, so like walking around, seeing kids and everyone, and then hearing about guns makes me, you know, sad about the city. The San Francisco DA's office has charged both men with numerous counts of robbery, burglary, false imprisonment, and assault. Live in San Francisco, Henry Lee, KTVU, Fox New News. Yeah, Henry, they have been charged. If found guilty, any idea how long they could spend behind bars? It all depends if they incorporate prior convictions. It could be many years, but we'll see how this all plays out in court. All right, Henry Lee reporting for us tonight in uh, San Francisco. I'm sure Jack has ain't got no Getting prior Getting started convictions. tonight with a crime alert out of downtown Memphis. A man assaulted and robbed as a carjacker takes his truck in broad daylight at a gas station on Riverside Drive. Hello, I'm Greg Hurst. Hi, I'm Stephanie Skurlock. WRG's Bria Jones joins us now live after speaking with that victim. And Bria, what have you learned? Well, Greg Steph, that man says he was here at this gas station refilling a work order when he came out to his car that was parked here near the dumpster. And that's when he says someone came out. Uh, he and parked on the side. Yeah, so don't do that. Don't park. Park in the. That's not going to help you that much, but why park around the back side like you? It's almost as if you're inviting. You know what I mean? Yeah, doing too much when he came out to his car that was parked here near the dumpster. And that's when he says someone came out and ambushed him. A 67-year-old man's sense of security snatched in seconds. He took my spirit. I mean, you know, never in my wildest mind would I have ever thought I'd be assaulted. Monday morning was ordinary for John E. Again, like, yeah, what's wrong with these gliders down here in Memphis, man? Never like, this ain't fucking life. 1940 or some shit. Wake up and smell the fucking, feel the sun on your face. <laughs> yeah, right. Man. Oh, good one. <laughs> right, man. Shit. Feel the heat. Salute to Savrics, man. He says, there are curriculums that literally tell whites not to clench their purses because it hurts the blacks' feelings. We see the results every day. It's disgusting. Yeah, facts, man. Um, who was that? I saw a video. A person was talking about that today. I can't remember who was talking about that, but somebody I was watching the video was talking about that. Yeah, like they they they're teaching, they're teaching, especially white women, to 
turn off their natural woman instincts. I'm talking about your natural, like that gut feeling when your stomach starts hurting. You know, so you ever been like just so scared your stomach started hurting? Queasy. You see chills. They're telling white people and white women to turn that off and to ignore that because you, you can't really turn it off, but to ignore that. Results Amen. are predictable. He sells restaurant supplies and came here to visit clients at the Exxon on Riverside Drive. But what happened next came out of nowhere. I was on my way back to my car and a young man about 25 came up and assaulted me. I wish I had seen him face to face. At least if you're going to attack me, hit me head on instead of sneaking up behind me. Eamon <sighs> says he didn't go down without a fight before being rushed to the hospital. But ultimately, he says the man who was wearing a green reflective vest got away with his 2004 white Sierra GMC work laptop, personal items, and the keys to his restaurant. When he hit me the second time, I had so much bleeding coming out of my on my face, my eye area, that my only intentions were to get back inside to where I'd be safe. We mapped out crime in the downtown area. And according to MPD's data hub, in the last three months, officers have responded to more than 1,300 calls regarding assault, theft, robbery, and property crime. This is just downtown. <laughs> 1,300 Brett, calls. Uh, are you allowed to defend yourself in Memphis? Yes, yes. It's open carry in Memphis, I thought, open or like constitutional. Uh, constitutional. Yeah, constitutional carry. Yes, you are. But how would he have offended himself if 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 a son man sneaks up on a sixty seven year old guy? Let's just say he's got it in the car, or he's got it. I mean, he probably. I don't know if he's open carry because open carry makes you a, a target as a sixty seven year old. So he probably wouldn't open carry. He probably have it in the car. It definitely wouldn't have helped him. No, I don't think so. Wait, why is a sixty-seven-year-old open carrying? What? That, 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 um, well, he lives in the hunting grounds. It would behoove him, but you know, you really, just makes him a target. Yeah, it would make you make somebody want to come take that gun from you. Easy, free gun. Um, so that's what I said. I wouldn't. I don't think he would open carry if he carried. But he, 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 they didn't say he stole his gun. They said everything that the guy got out the car. So it wasn't even a gun in the car. Vest got away with his 2004 white Sierra GMC work laptop, personal items, and the keys to his restaurant. When he hit me the second time, I had so much bleeding coming out of my on my face, my eye area. That my only intentions were to get back inside where I'd be safe. We mapped out crime in the downtown area. And according to MPD's data hub, in the last three months, officers have responded to more than 1,300 calls regarding assault, theft, robbery, and property crime. I definitely think it's a problem. I think that people aren't going to feel safe unless... <laughs> you think? So this is the most... This is the most aware white woman that we see so far. Don't go jogging. Jeez. Christ, how do y'all live in this city in 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 that city like, of Cleotha? Yeah, how do y'all not like get like some of the film from the city on you? Like some of the the muck, because it's like these people actually they sound and their their ideology and their sensibilities and the things they're saying. It's almost as if they live in. Mayberry. Well, she probably does live in an all glider community. But you still have to fucking leave the house, and a lot of those glider com communities are a fertile hunting ground for sons. And like you've grown yeah. up here, and, and ninety nine out of a hundred people you've seen in the headlines that have been murdered have been murked by sun people. And yeah. like you just. I don't understand how you can live in a place like Memphis or New Orleans or Jackson or, you know, one of these, or Baltimore, or D.C. Be for clueless. that matter, right? You'd be clueless. Right, where it's the, the primary threat to your well-being. 
I mean, you've had 1,300 calls for assault and robbery and violence downtown. Just downtown. Like, just this one small Gaza strip. Like, like, <laughs> oh, fucking Memphis. Like, it does look like the Gaza strip. It does, you know, no fucking lie. Fuck, oh, man. Like, yo. How the fuck do you not know? How do you not feel it, even if you don't know? How do you not, like, feel it? Because I know when you see Sun Men in Memphis, they got gold teeth, they're hard, their pants are sagging, the dreads, they got a tough exterior, they bopping, they carrying guns, open carry. Like, how do you not, how do you be so clueless? I think it's a problem. I think that people aren't going to feel safe unless the car break and stop. Kristen Dana Miller lives in the South Main District. She has had her car stolen before and says she sees broken glass almost daily. She wants to see stricter gun laws. They're trying to, to break into these cars to get the guns out. You know, most of the times you hear about people just breaking the windows and not taking anything, even things that are valuable. So thankfully, there is surveillance video, so that should help with this investigation. Even says that MPD told him today that his car has been spotted both in Frazier and Olive Branch. We're now reporting live downtown, Bria Jones, WREG News Channel 3. Right. <sighs> City of Philadelphia's courtesy move. tow system. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, wow, it's, 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 it's rough, man. Like, God, it's tough being a glider, man. Being a glider is tough man i mean we're hunted every time we step out our door every day literally you're hunting us literally we are getting a closer look at surveillance video that captured some frightening moments in the city's east oak lane neighborhood yesterday afternoon police say two men opened fire on a crowd standing outside of a convenience store just seconds after a school bus drove by NBC 10's Brian Sheehan is live outside One atrocity in Philadelphia the with the very latest on this Perhaps case, Brian. Yeah, Johnny, we are still waiting to hear if any students were on that bus. This shooting happened just as school was letting out yesterday, so it is possible. But what we do know this afternoon is that two men were shot, one critically. This shocking video from 335 yesterday afternoon shows a Philadelphia school bus passing a white Nissan Rogue just as two men dressed in dark clothing exit. Switches. You see that? Yep. Extend those and switches. Push heisties. Those things are humping. Like they're literally just like just filling the air with lead. On Rogue, just as two men dressed in dark clothing exit and open fire. The kickback on that thing, the kickback is crazy because he can't even control it. Like, he literally got to aim for the ground if he want to hit somebody. Just in dark clothing exit and open fire. It was loud. Uh, I heard it right next to the, my ear when I was playing video games. And once I heard it, I ran away because, you know, I have windows next to my setup. DeAndre Santiago was yeah, inside. DeAndre, I wasn't expecting that. Were you? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is this guy? I need to laugh, man. I wasn't expecting DeAndre, man. Shit. That's a new one, man. Yeah, well, you better. DeAndre, you need to find somewhere else to play video games because this shit is getting hot. <laughs> Yeah, the only casualty was his name in this entire situation. Yeah, man. Wow. Home and ducked for cover as the two men fired more than 30 shots from semi-automatic handguns in just nine seconds. Investigators say their target was a group of people who were standing on this corner of the 6200 block of Masher Street and Godfrey Avenue in yeah. Stoke Lane. A 24-year-old man was hit several times throughout his body, and a 23-year-old man was struck once in the hand. I'm glad to be safe. Um, glad to be here, because uh, God forbid a bullet went through my window and something happened to me or my family. Police believe the Nissan Rogue the suspects were driving was made between 2014 and 2016. It has tinted side and rear windows, Stolen. a black pinstripe, and five-spoke silver alloy wheels. 
Santiago and other neighbors we spoke with today say this street is typically quiet, but not immune to the gun violence that plagues our city streets. Well, if you have a bunch of fucking sun turds hanging out in front of this place, how is it quiet? Like, they're being quiet while they're hanging out there? And it's just the norm. And they're going in the house at a reasonable hour? And Quiet like, is anything less than gunshots. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think, yeah, that's probably true. Because, like, yeah, if you got a bunch of sun turds hanging out in front of this fucking place, man, your fucking community, you got litter, snot loogies, fucking double parked cars, all types of shit that come with sun. Smell like weed on the whole block. The whole block reeking of weed. Fucking cigarello wrappers everywhere. Blunt guts. <laughs> Tumble weave. Chicken bones on the ground. Yeah, like it's 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 you yo. Yeah, man. And then their enemies, if one of them, like if one of those guys like had an issue, tweeted something, it could be fucking 15, 20 guys hang out right there in front of that store. If one of those guys tweeted something another son man didn't like. You get this. Yeah, you get this over a tweet, like literally over a tweet. From 335 yesterday afternoon, it shows a Philadelphia school bus passing a white Nissan Rogue just as two men dressed in dark clothing exit and open fire. Could you imagine you're in here taking a shit? (laughs) Oh, shit. And it's like, oh, my God, you could be dead for taking a shit. Mm. Now, if you have any information, you are asked to contact the shooting investigations group or call 215-686-TIPS. Live outside police headquarters in Spring Garden. I'm Brian Sheehan, and these... <laughs> Shake your heads, Johnny. God damn. Oh, these guns. <laughs> yeah, these damn guns. These guns. Shit, man. Uh Anyway, this new program hopes that it can stop the violence. Sadly, I call carjacking the cousin to murder. These bad guys that are doing the carjackings are carrying real guns with real bullets, and they have shown time and time again that they're not afraid to use it. Baltimore police are investigating three separate carjackings that happened Monday. The carjackings are the cousin to murder. Yeah, damn. Who's the daddy? Um, a mad, mad shooting is the daddy, and fucking goddamn rape is the brother. <laughs> what the fuck kind of fucked up analogy is this shit? Yeah, yeah. Carjackers murders a little cub, bro. They, they try, man. They try. Sadly, I call carjacking the cousin to murder. These bad guys that are doing the carjackings are carrying real guns with real bullets. And they have shown time and time again that they're not afraid to use it. Baltimore police are investigating three separate carjackings that happened Monday in the middle of the day. Around 1030 a.m., police confirm a woman was forcibly thrown from her truck on Edmondson Avenue. Her dog, Lucy, was still in the car. These bad guys are not operating under the anonymity of darkness. They're doing it in broad daylight. Police say officers spotted the stolen truck a short time later and tried to stop it. But the suspect sped off, ran a red light at Caton and Frederick, hit a car in the McDonald's parking lot and kept going before crashing into a pole and a fence. Both suspects were arrested and taken to the hospital. (laughs) And they never like are critically injured by this shit. Never. You know, they fucking kill everybody No, 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 no. We did the story the other day with the 14s were incinerated in that oh, yeah crash. okay yeah that one yeah that was whew. i just i just can't take anybody seriously that calls them bad guys like they're criminals man this isn't like an episode of he-man or something you know what i mean like yeah i mean there's a limit to what they'll let them say on the air like this but some of them are so fucking like folksy boomer about it and it really demonstrates a lack of understanding about the the root of the issue 
Yeah, I mean, so in this little time frame, they take a woman, throw her from her car, like just traumatize the shit out of her. They hit another car in this parking lot, which is sets that family back or whatever, whatever they're dealing with now, now that their car's been fucking probably um damaged in a major way. They damaged the McDonald's property, knocked down these fucking goddamn what are these things called? I forgot. Those things right there. And those things are fucking made out of concrete. Yeah, it's like they, concrete barrier is what I thought. Yeah, and then they come over here and they crash into it looks like a business right here or a fence or something. Just just think about it. This is this is going on 10, 15 times a day in these cities, man. At least 10 times a day in these cities. Just this, this act. Jesus Christ. Man. And uh, they said the majority of them in Baltimore are 15 year olds, right? Yeah. 15 in DC. Anonymity of darkness. They're doing it in broad daylight. Police say officers spotted the stolen truck a short time later and tried to stop it, but the suspect sped off, ran a red light at Caton and Frederick, hit a car in the McDonald's parking lot, and kept going before crashing into a pole and a fence. Both suspects were arrested and taken to the hospital. I tell people all the time, you have to keep your head on a swivel. You have to know. You have to go with your gut. If you see something that doesn't appear right and you know that this is something that's happening, you have to pay attention. Monday night around 5.15 p.m., two armed suspects walked in front of a car on Mosher Street and ordered the driver out. Five minutes later, another person was carjacked at gunpoint on Eberly Drive. In both of those cases, the victims complied and weren't injured. WBAL News Radio's TJ Smith, a former law enforcement commander, says being aware and alert is the best way to protect yourself. Be prepared. Get in your car. Lock your car. Head up. Get on that phone at a different time, not sitting in the car with your head buried in it, because that's when you make yourself more susceptible to being a victim. According to Baltimore City crime data, there have been 387 carjackings this year, 39 in the past 28 days, and five in the past week. However, so this is this is carjacking. This isn't stolen cars. You know, this is this is carjacking. That's it's like actually, throwing you out of your car. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually a low number. Because Columbus, I mean, they had so many, and, and that's a smaller city. But this is, yeah, I'm actually, this is actually a low number, 387, which is a lot, which is like insane, outrageous, but I was expecting more. And five in the past week. But you know what? Baltimore's game is more murder. Like those guys there, they sell heroin and they murder people. So it's like the Kia boy shit may not be that big over there. And that wouldn't be a carjacking. That would be all of the eight days and five in the past week. However, Baltimore police say carjackings are down 22 percent for the year. Looking at the numbers, although there has been a decrease throughout this year, there's been an increase the last couple of months. So people have to be aware of their surroundings. Smith says if you're in a position to get away safely, then get away. But if you can't, your best bet is to cooperate as your life may depend on it. Live from City Police Headquarters, I'm Janine Donaldson for WBAL TV 11. Wait. Oh. Yeah, it's just so nice to live around some people. Well, court records Richard. indicate Richard Mays pleaded. Well, court records indicate Richard Mays pleaded guilty to driving while impaired back in July, and he is scheduled to be sentenced in December. Now he is accused of another DUI, and along Providence Road, where the deadly crash happened, neighbors there want to have more safety traffic devices. Slow down. This is a neighborhood, not a racetrack. A message from a frustrated homeowner. They really need to slow down. I mean, there's too many, there's too many people that are walking around here with their dogs, with their kids. We are concerned about the rush that people are in and the unsafe condition that 
it seems that living on the street present. This is video of a police stop in the Campus Hills neighborhood of Towson Tuesday as the investigation continues into Saturday's deadly crash that killed 24-year-old Eliza Grover. The Goucher College student was out on a run when police say she was hit by a drunk driver. 57-year-old Richard Mays of Towson is charged with driving or attempting to drive Mays. a vehicle under the influence or impaired by alcohol <laughs> and driving a vehicle not equipped with an ignition interlock system. 11 News obtained a copy of the court charging document. It says Race Mays white. was driving a work vehicle but was no, off duty. On that paper, it the says scene, white. the responding officer wrote he observed <laughs> Mays had a flushed face with glassy, watery eyes and the officer detected a strong odor of an alcoholic beverage emanating from his breath. Mays stated he had two to three beers earlier in the day. What could have caused the crash? Mays stated his cell phone rang, he reached for it, and it fell to the floor. Upon reaching down to retrieve the phone, he heard something, and that is when he struck the pedestrian. Mays admitted to police he had bought a 12-pack of beer. A receipt found on defendant Mays' person stated the beer was purchased at 4.11 p.m. The crash occurred at 4.22 p.m. The vehicle he was operating was not equipped with an interlock. For the families living near Cromwell Valley Elementary and this crosswalk. That fuck Todd had, like, if you don't have an interlock on the car, he's going to drink and drive. He was loaded on his way back from getting another 12-pack. I mean, he had been drinking all fucking day. That bee's a glider, Jack. Yeah, why the fuck do people do that shit? Drink and drive. Sadly, like, I call carjack. I have to drink and drive. Like, like he, like, the, so, if, he, if the yeah. car had it in a lot, he wouldn't have drink and drive. It's like crazy, man. Fuck. Um, Yikes. Yikes. This is what it looks like. Um, it's looking funny. I'm not seeing anybody else. That's what it looks like. Oh my God. Sweet Christ. This is what it looks like. A lot of bopping going on. See a calamity counter. This one's got the cash register right here. He's. Look at him, man. Good, sure, man. Oh, he's out. He on his bike with the cash register. They out. <laughs> he's done. Man, the Reds got him a bag. He's going to go around and collect shopping. some shit. This is shopping, man. I mean, this, is, this is what it looks like. This is So this is what it looks like. Wow. Oh, paper towels. Good one. Yeah. Stereotypes, huh? <laughs> These are the types. <laughs> Shit. Dude. Look at the glee. I mean, it's really charming how much they enjoy it. <laughs> I mean, if you really think about it, like, None of this stuff would exist. No CVS, no Walgreens would exist. So, like, it is kind of like magic or like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, if you go magic. in there and take that shit, it just gets restocked. Yeah. It's, it's, it's literally, none of this would exist. I mean, that creates a food desert in the same way that, like, fine. planting oh, the same crops over and over again without nourishing the soil does. Exactly. A rotating or not I mean, it's just two concepts that some people have largely failed to grasp. Five at five, a horrifying intrusion. An Atlanta man violently attacked inside his own apartment. Tonight he's recovering as we learn new details about who may be behind that vicious invasion. It all happened at the 1016 lofts on Howell Mill in West Midtown. Atlanta News First, Yasmina Austin, live at five at the complex. So, Yasmina, how did this all happen? 
Yeah, police say that the man tried opening several doors at this complex before finding one that was unlocked tonight. Thankfully, the suspect is in custody and the victim. He, he what? What did he do? This complex before finding one that was unlocked tonight. Thankfully, the suspect. Yeah, police say that the man tried opening several doors at this complex before finding one that was unlocked tonight. Thankfully, the suspect is in custody and the victim shared his scary story with us. And I can't go over there alone without feeling like someone's going to come up behind me and attack me. Brian Stokes still can't believe it. A man entered his apartment on Howell Mill Road Thursday and beat him nearly unconscious. Stokes didn't want to show his face on Tuesday as he Jesus recovers Christ. from a fractured eye and a severe concussion. This picture shows him in the hospital. And he punched me in the eye. I fell to the ground and then he just started beating me. Then he picked up this handheld vacuum I got. Um, it started hitting me across the head with it multiple times, like to the point where I started bleeding from my scalp. See, I would have stabbed that guy. I that's was, that, that's that's why I would say like carry some mace or or a knife or a blade. Like I would have stabbed that guy. It's, Keep it's, some man off you, blade. Yeah, but yeah, it's but it's just like it's like. Most guys I know, almost everybody I know would have stabbed that guy. And thinking about like what this guy went through, it's the bare minimum you can do to protect you and your loved ones is to have a keep a sun man off me blade and some and some some mace on you. Like even when I'm in the house, like I I I I, I carry if, if I got my pants on, if I'm, if I'm walking around in my drawers, maybe not. But if I got pants on, yeah, that guy would have got stabbed. Have a plan to repel sun attack everywhere you are. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just so sad, man. I think sun Speaking of, uh, that. Sun, sun News, did you hear about the canal they're trying to build in Haiti? <laughs> oh, Ooh, that, no. That's going well. Yeah, the Dominican Republic and the Haitians are fighting. Up. Don't, don't they have people are, are digging. It's, it's funny they're digging the whole right. canal. It's probably going to be filled with trash in a couple of years. Right, like yeah, they got huge problems down there. Um, they like what's for dinner tonight? Fuck a canal. He across the head with it multiple times, like to the point where I started bleeding from my scalp, and I was, I. Didn't go unconscious, but I could feel myself starting to pass out. But then he just stopped and he left out the door. He says the incident happened just minutes after his brother left to pick up food. That's when someone suddenly opened the door. I thought it was my brother again because I thought he just forgot something. Instead, police say it was 32-year-old Justin Gilliam. Even after police arrived, investigators say Gilliam locked himself into a unit until the SWAT team showed up. Stokes, who is a photographer, is now out of work until he fully heals, both physically and emotionally. I'm not going to let this hold me down. I'm not going to let this hold me back. Like... Yeah, it was a very unfortunate situation for me, but like, I'm glad I wasn't killed. And Stokes says he has no idea who the suspect is. And according to the police report, the suspect also allegedly assaulted a woman at the same complex. Live in Northwest Atlanta, Yasmina Alton. <laughs> it's fucked up how he didn't have a pava to let him in this uh, building here. Right, Pavel, man, Pavel took it, took one for the team. They need to, um, you know, create a, uh, a, you know, venture capitalist fund for an app that, you know, finds vagrant, you know, killer sun men that need to be let into apartment buildings to murder people, and you know, enable POCs to let them do that. Oh, wow! At this hour, a dramatic move from the Atlanta Police Department severing ties with one of its own. I'm Sean Gables. And I'm Alan Devlin. Thanks for joining us here at 6. Chief Darren Shearbaum fired Kiran Kimbrough following an investigation into a deacon's death. According to the chief, the now former officer violated procedures while trying to arrest Johnny Holman. The grandfather and deacon died while being taken into custody. Atlanta News for Zach Summers, live in Decatur tonight. So, Zach, today's firing comes less than 24 hours after Holman's family met with Fulton County District Attorney Bonnie Willis. 
Yeah, that firing in the family considers a victory, but they also want Officer Kimbrough prosecuted. And, you know, the family, they've seen the body camera video that these officers were wearing. They want the public to also see that video. But today, Atlanta Police Chief Darren Shearbaum announced the firing of Officer Kimbrough, saying the 23-year-old failed to have a supervisor on the scene before trying to arrest Hallman. Investigators say Hallman refused to sign a citation. You have to have a supervisor on the scene before you can arrest Oh, oh. Failed to have a supervisor on the scene before trying to arrest Hallman. Investigators say Hallman refused to sign a citation following a minor accident. The 62-year-old was minutes away from his home on August 10th when the incident happened in southwest Atlanta. The GBI says there was some kind of struggle, at which point Officer Kimbrough tased Hallman. The medical examiner ruled his death a homicide, the meaning that Brooks. heart disease also contributed to Holman's death. Yeah. And refused to sign a, tra a document about a minor leave. traffic accident. Like, cry me a fucking river, dude. I'm so tired of this goddamn story. <laughs> yeah, and then now it's like a big fucking deal and more racism and all this bullshit. Are you, aren't you a deacon? You're like supposed to be a fucking leader in the community. Like, have some fucking sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Be, be different than the average son, man. Like, God, dog. Oh, man, wow. We're learning more about what led up to a deadly shooting near Winwood Walls early Monday morning. NBC 6's Amanda Placencia joins us on with the latest. Amanda. <laughs> Yes, Juan, and it turns out that this shooting, which happened here in Wynwood, was reportedly a fight between a local rapper and her manager. And now the question for investigators is whether this was self-defense or second-degree murder. A heated argument landed Kavani Hicks in jail after she's accused of shooting and killing a man. You are arrested for one count of second-degree murder. According to records on Sunbiz, the local rapper known as Kivani is a manager of a recording studio called Pretty Thug Music. Police say the fight was with her manager. We know that based on her statement that he, the, the victim in this case, is her manager, and she says that she's a singer, um, but we don't know what led to this argument. Police say the guy... So she's a... She's going to have a tough time getting shows, man, now that her manager's dead. Yeah, that was a bad oh. business decision. <laughs> right. Shit, man. Um, golly, man. Definitely going to have, you know, other managers are going to have a pause before working with her. I think. <laughs> Maybe so. I mean, being a manager of a rapper is like, you probably know, like most of those guys are like sociopaths and psychopaths, but still like, yeah, you killed the manager. So, yeah. It'll be like, can we put a clause in the contract that you won't kill me? <laughs> Look, I can tell you, as a glider asking y'all to kill, not to kill us, it's probably not going to work. Oh, shit, man. Second degree murder. According to records on Sunbiz, the local rapper known as Kivani is a manager of a recording studio called Pretty Thug Music. Police say the fight was with her manager. We know that based on her statement that he, the, the victim in this case, is her manager, and she says that she's a singer, um, but we don't know what led to this argument. Police say they got a shot spotter alert around 1.30 Monday morning on Northwest 2nd Avenue near Winwood Walls. Based on witness statements and surveillance video, which has not been released by police, Hicks and the driver of a white Lexus got out of the car and were visibly upset and began arguing. First, the driver hit Hicks, throwing her to the ground, and then the alleged victim, her manager, also gets out of the car and beats her. It's clear from the arrest. What? It's the manager and the driver got the out and put the beat and down on her by police. Hicks and the driver of a white Lexus got out of the car and were visibly upset and began arguing. First, the driver hit Hicks, throwing her to the ground, and then the alleged victim, her manager, also gets out of the car and beats her. Judge, it's clear from the arrest form that Ms. Hicks is being attacked by two men, plummeted to the ground, basically. Once the attack ended, police say Hicks took out a gun and started shooting at her manager. He later died at the hospital. The singer told police that she was in fear for her life. When Ms. Hicks meets with the officer, 
she indicates that the alleged victim told her that I'll kill you in one hit, which would obviously make anyone afraid for their life. Hicks was also hit by the white Lexus as a driver took off. Whether or not this was self-defense will be up to the court as a judge found probable cause. This is a case that if she had shot him when he was beating her, she probably could have been justified. But the fact that he was retreating at the point that she started firing at him, um, it becomes where she did, committed the offense that she's being charged with. Mm. And Hicks is currently being held without bond. Police are also still looking mm. for the driver of that Lexus no to get bond. their side of what happened. No bond for her. A woman getting beat down in the middle of the street by two guys. No bond. Wow. This is where they decided to draw the line. Shit. And on that note, same bad time, same bad channel.